Not my Smokey. Have y'all seen him bumping into the grinding on the stage, rubbing all over each other like he just took an E pill? Y'all got me fucked up. You got the Smokey messed up if you think that Smokey ain't got no soul. Y'all are lunching. That man, what is he, like 90? He could get it. Oh, I would attack him with the pressures of my love. You hear me? Bugs, hello there, Bellas. If you have not already done so, please remember to like, share to Facebook, subscribe, and visit uptopbeauty.com. Today's looky looky is our pink unicorn turban. Why don't you go over there and check it out? Remember, all turbans come with a free gift. And if you are not already a part of our book club, please remember. Two, hit the Patreon link below and or the join button here on the YouTube and for, and for a small monthly fee of $5. You babies, yes you, can be privy to all the shenanigans before the YouTube gets it, baby, if the YouTube gets it. Now, let's keep on talking about the untold story of Barry Bed Bug Bites, me, that would be the Sugar Ray, Raynoma, Gordy Singleton, and Motown. When I arrived at my post, I found that in addition to the constant swirl of changing faces, the actual physical setting at the Sunset Boulevard Motown office was being altered. Workmen were remodeling the entire place. Walls were down, carpet was up, and furniture was scattered about. So I set up a temporary niche in a closet-like room next to Lee Young's office. That's the dude who she's going to be uh, working for. That is the dude uh, that is in charge of Joe Bat's creative division. From this vantage point, I could meet or reacquaint myself with our latest stellar cast of characters. Nathaniel Montag was simultaneously one of the most interesting and least known characters to ever cut a path through the halls of Motown. Barry hired Montag as a consultant in the mid 70s to oversee various facets of Motown a wide ranging job that brought him closely into contact with top executives. In this position, Montag uncovered numerous scams involving millions of company dollars and due in part to his findings, certain well-salaried heads rolled. It had taken Barry a while to realize about Barney what I'd always sensed. However, Barry eventually discovered that Barney almost put the company out of business. The whole story of his final parting of the ways with Barry is a matter I would never have enough attorneys to discuss publicly. Fortunately, upon my return to Motown, Barney was there no more. Yeah, she hated Barney. I'm sure a lot of people hated Barney, but you know, the karma always comes. I ain't mess with that bitch karma, I don't like her. I was therefore delighted to find that my immediate boss, new a &R director, Lee Young Sr., was a thoroughbred music man. For once, an inspired choice on Barry's part. A veteran musician of many years, Lee was a jazz drummer who had played with many of the greats, including Nat King Cole. His son, Lee Young Jr. headed Motown's legal department and his brother, Lester Young, was a renowned tenor saxophonist. He and I were basically of one musical mind. 
and it looked as if we were going to hit it off just fine. Now, one important chapter of 1981 began with William Smokey Robinson. Oh my God, okay, so this part broke my heart. Here we are, we in 19, what is this, 81, okay? And right now, the producers are not working with him because they look at him as a has-been, okay? He had stopped performing with the Miracles by 1972, okay? And eventually, he stopped writing music altogether because I guess his spirit was broken. And in addition to that, disco was coming around. You know, disco ain't for everybody, especially a crooner. You know, disco came in real hard and it left even harder. So now you have Smokey Robinson around the early 80s that's sitting at home with Claudette Robinson, the beautiful Claudette. Um, Smokey Robinson is just sitting around the house drinking beer. Not really, you know, but that's my interpretation. You know, sitting on the couch watching Netflix, okay? She want him up out of the house. I get it. Okay, I told y'all my wife only works three days a week, all right? I be looking at her on them four days like, it ain't nothing you can do. You ain't got no cars to wash or something. There were no hits, and he was without direction, especially throughout the late 70s disco phase. Staff producers saw him as a has-been, claiming he has no soul. Not my Smokey. Have y'all seen him bumping into the grinding on the stage, rubbing all over each other like he just took an e-pill? Y'all got me fucked up. You got the Smokey messed up if you think that Smokey ain't got no soul. Y'all are lunching. That man, what is he, like 90? He could get it. Ooh, I would attack him with the pressures of my love. You Smokey hear me? had long been seen as a teacher's pet, and some of the gloaters weren't sorry to see him out on the ropes, niggas. See, that's why I say you youngers don't respect your elderly. Y'all don't respect the vets in the game. You know, y'all just terrible. Young people be terrible sometimes. Not the ones that follow me, though. Not y'all. Not y'all. Y'all not terrible. You love me. Y'all know I'm damn near a senior citizen, and y'all still give me the love. Okay, girl, Sugar Ray, when I say sometimes you be giving us the tea, girl, and sometimes you be annoying the F out of me. Oh, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. I love that man to I die. Girl, you don't get no points for being a dummy, girl. You don't get no points for being that just because you love them through all his bad time you know like women be thinking that the if i go through him with all these challenges that i'm gonna get the re great reward his hand in marriage his love girl if that's all the reward is is his love girl you could buy a goddamn dog a dog a love you man sugar ray is giving up all the tea right i didn't know this i'm sure when you hear this you husbands didn't know it either right but she said that Motown actually went into the red as a result of Barry trying to support Smokey Robinson, okay? Because he was putting so much money behind Smokey Robinson that, you know, people like, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm only getting this certain amount of money, and you around here, you still paying Smokey Robinson, and this nigga can't shit a hit? You know what I'm saying? He can't breathe a hit. He can't sing a hit. He can't write a hit. He can't do nothing. And you still giving this dude money and we struggling? Barry had considered putting him on the shelf. Okay? You know, because Barry DeGordy, you know, he's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He go from one extent to the next. You know, that's one thing that... I believe that you have to understand when you're dealing with him or a man like him, you have to tolerate the bad in order to enjoy the good. So we had Smokey the Robinson over there on the shelf, okay? On Smokey Robinson's birthday, he came through the door and was like, here man, happy birthday, and gave him a beautiful watch, all right? Smokey is still on the shelf. Okay, he knows that his friend is depressed. He knows that his friend feels defeated. But we're learning that Barry DeGordy is struggling with Motown too. We winding down the little celebration for Smokey the Robinson's birthday. Okay, Barry says to him, "Hey man, look, one of these cars is blocking me in. Can you can you come outside with me right quick and move this bullshit that's blocking me in, bro? I gotta go." So. You know, when Smokey Robinson and Barry the Gordy goes outside, you know, the car that's 
blocking Barry Gordy in is a Rolls Royce. Barry Gordy hands Smokey Robinson the keys and said, look, man, here you go. Happy birthday. So According to Sugar Ray, Smokey Robinson passed every single test that Barry Gordy gave to now, him. Now, when I'm reflecting back on all the greats that had to go through uh, Motown's doors, I'm saying, what kind of test did they have to pass? What did they have to do in order to prove to Barry Gordy that they were worthy of his love and dedication? His long-term slump, which was tearing away at his ego, had had only a brief respite. When he hit with the 1979 smash, baby, let's cruise away from here. His long-term slump, which was tearing away at his ego, had had only a brief respite. When he hit with the 1979 smash, cruising. Oh. Baby! Okay. I'm gonna stop talking so much, y'all. When I tell you the most romantic thing ever in the world is for you and your partner to just be sitting in a car, preferably luxury, I mean, I am a Libra, with the top open, listening to oldies, Oh my God, that is like the most freeing, beautiful time machine that you can ever enter. I love cruising. I do. In real life, I do. And I think I got that from um, dealing with the Texan, you know, like um, somebody was picking on me one time and had said, so uh, I heard you was with a Texan, huh? I was like, yeah. He was like, what y'all do? Just drive around in the car all day? Well, here comes this producer dude named uh, George Tobin, okay? Now, Motown ain't like him, okay? Because they was like, oh, that nigga is shysty. Watch him, okay? But he was a shrewd businessman. Sugar Ray said, well, that's kind of ironic considering that uh, Motown is full of shysty mother hunchies. How you gonna judge him for being shysty? But let's see, Tobin had, uh, had faith in Smokey the Robinson, right? And he said, look, Smokey, I know Motown don't mess with me, all right? I really don't give a fuck because I'm going to make my money anyway, right? But tell them that I will produce your whole album for free. Just make sure I get my points, okay? Now, thinking about the, or talking about the point situation, I swear to God, I don't understand what that is. I think it has something to do with money and how much money they get after the release of it, something like that. Because Motown really didn't um, believe in Smokey the Robinson ever coming back. They was like, sure, 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 sure. Oh, oh we ain't got to pay nothing? Okay, double sure. Smokey took Georgia's proposal to Lee Young Jr., Top dog at the legal department and Young laughed. You mean Tobin's going to put out his money to do this album and all he's talking about is points? Sure, we'll sign the deal for the eight points. The Motown attorney thought he just pulled the fast one. Tobin was assuming all the rest. The two of them were holding their breath while the company sat back and twiddled its thumbs, waiting for the album and the single, both entitled Being With You, to die. Hold on, I gotta sing my song. I don't care what they think about me. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they say that you leave me. I'm gonna beg you to stay. Endeavor was a super smash. The single went double platinum. Smokey was back in the saddle and Tobin was cleaning up and the company got mud on its face. That same year, there was a drama starring the all-star diva herself, Miss Diana the Boss 
Ross. Listen, we about to do the Diana Ross book. I don't want no shit out of y'all. You hear me? When I, listen, listen. I know all the books we read, it does not look good for D. Diana Ross. I, 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 I get it, okay? I, I know, but we know that Aries are very selfish people, but when it's good, it's good, okay? Now, when it's bad, it's bad, all right? But I'm not going to tolerate y'all coming through, and a lot of you hussies be testing me, okay? When I tell y'all, do not be in the comments disrespecting Diana, y'all still come through, okay? Y'all can keep that shit because I'm going to stop blocking you niggas, okay? I'm, I'm sick. I keep telling y'all and forewarning y'all, stop disrespecting Diana D. Boss Ross, okay? And some of y'all are just haters and y'all wait for the opportunity to hate on y'all, on her, okay? My platform is not your, you know, oasis to hate on Diana. not already done so please remember to like share to facebook subscribe and visit uptopbeauty.com remember this the same people that you meet on the way up will always be the same people that you meet on the way down my naysayers my patron loves you babies have a good one